guys, we're running a minute late. Sorry, we are here today to talk about our free pattern this month. Jen, what's it called? Um, it's called Evening Star. It's named after a poem by Edgar Allan Poe because that's how we are. Because we're dorks. It's not really a Halloween quilt, but I chose Halloween fabric. Which makes it a Halloween quilt. Right. Kind of amazing how that works. Right. Um, so it's going to be the free pattern in our newsletter, which will go out probably go. this afternoon evening because we now have to finish writing the pattern. Um, yeah, so if you are not subscribed to our newsletter, you go to our website, jkquilts.com, scroll all the way down to the, bottom, the bottom of the main page, and you enter your name and email address. That's it. If you are getting an invalid submission response, it's probably because you're already signed up. Um, if you are not getting the newsletter and you know that you're signed up, the best thing you can do is honestly shoot Jen an email because then what happens is your email provider decides that she's a safe contact and doesn't send her stuff to spam. Doesn't decide I'm spam. And so her email address is jennifer at jkquilts.com. Right. So if you know you're having trouble getting it, that's the best step that's to take. That's the best thing. Yeah, just say, hey, just want to make sure I get the newsletter. Yeah, and I, she will gladly ignore I won't think anything 100 emails of it. this morning. Yeah, it'll be fine. Not a problem. So, I mean, I'll click through them to make sure there's nothing I need to answer. But if yeah. you really need an answer to a question, it might take a minute because I might get a few emails. So, good morning. Yeah. If you, by the way, you guys, if you like this quilt as it is, which I do because I helped her pick out the fabric, we, because we just pulled from what was on the shelf, we're only able to cut two kits. So, if you want one, claim it. Now, now it's called Evening Star Quilt Kit. Sixty five ninety nine. Sixty five ninety nine. And it's this beautiful pile. It's this beautiful pile plus the pattern. Once I finish writing it today, so um, there's two of them available. That being said, guys, we have some great options we to make have it again. More. Plus, this can be done out of every anything. Wait till you get the pattern because I'm, uh, unless you really want this because I have it in grayscale. And She's then showing you kind of a colors and then sort, a color I'm gonna study. do a whole bunch of mock-ups that I'll have Liz post, so you'll get a color study of all the different things you can do with this. It's really fun because it's simple. If you're just learning how to play with color, okay, this it's a great four one color. and a quarter yard cuts, mm -hmm. so nothing really tricky, and you can decide where to put the colors later. Because they're simple. Because then you can just lay it out and play with your layout. Right. But we've got lots of Halloween stuff here. I decided to use my bats as a the binding. A couple of these fabrics that are in it yet. are from a line. It's called A Haunting We Will Glow. Glow. Because they glow in, in the dark. dark. You guys, these spider webs and these bats will glow in the dark. It these kind spider of webs me out because have kind metallic of a metallic feel to them. I, I had it on my wall in my sewing room and forgot that it was glow in the dark. And then I turned off the light to go to bed, and it's like, startled. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's glow in the dark fabric. Yeah. And um, then these other two are basics from Riley Blake. This is their large hashtag, and this is their mini hashtag. Mini hashtag. You'll notice I, I alternated a big, big prints with kind of blenders, and that's because if they were all really busy, big busy prints, prints, your eyes going to get tired. Okay. And the, the haunted houses, they're on the bot. Guys, this is the back. That's the back of the quilt. And I insisted that she used it, and she agreed. Sarita was so excited that we used and, it. And um, it's pretty much it's, a fantastic It's adorable. Bat. And then we're going to do glue in the dark bats for a binding. But, you know, yeah. I was here quilting it last night, so I'm not superwoman. Didn't get it bound overnight. In fact, I left it here because I wanted to go to bed. Yep. Okay. Anyway, so let's make a block. So this I... block is an eclipse star, Yep, is what this is called. So basically, it's a sawtooth star cut in half on the diagonal. Um... So, you'll see in the pattern, for the most part, we're going to make things two at a time. So, the center block, because it's a half square triangle, we're not going to be crazy here. Now, I'm using some of my Midnight Magic fabric, so we're totally changing tones. It's going to be awesome. Guess what? This would be so adorable in Midnight Magic. I know. I was thinking this morning as I was cutting this out, I should take all my leftover Boo fabric and just make another one. There you go. So, I'm just going to take the, because these are going to be my star. These two fabrics. So I'm just going to take these two, place them right sides together, and um, draw a line down the center and sew a quarter of an inch on each side. Now I'm also going to do that, cut an extra one here, with 
these two fabrics, these are my background fabrics that I'm going to use. Um, again, going with this, this is my blender, I'm going to call it, and this is my print. Um, so I'm going to match this blender one up to the big gray mums, and then this one up to the white and gray um, brambles. But these are going to be my two corner blocks. Yeah, like you, this. So you have the half square triangles here and here. So we're making half square triangles in two different sizes. Oh, is... and I'm going to use lavender thread. Cheapening. It's a good blendy color. It's a great blendy color. Nothing wrong oh, with lavender. I should also not have my machine set up to go backwards. Ooh, no. Okay. So. Well, she is. Liz is going to have to move some of that triangles. stuff out of the way because. I'm going to move things so I have room Pretty to much trim. everything is going to have to be squared up, guys. And you know our opinion on squaring up. You don't skip that step. And in this pattern, I'm writing everything about an eighth of an inch big. And so except, if you skip squaring up, it won't work. Except for the um, three and a half inch like cornerstones or the corner blocks here that are one piece. Everything else has to be squared up because I need my scissors because I'm a firm believer in squaring up because that's how you get good points and yeah, things in the right size. Got to take my leader off. Yes, yes you do. Right. Oh, are you doing this one too? Uh, no, I ask. So this is me because you have to make two at a time. Oh, she cut enough. I just two. cut an extra of this. But so we're just going to make one make today. No, I'm just... It was just me while I was cutting. But we're just going to make one today. Well, I drew a line for you anyway. But when you uh, make these at home, just plan on two at a time. Okay. But that's because I feel like that's the best use of anything. Another thing you're going to notice is that these are for her flying geese, you guys. Yep. And um, <laughs> you wonder why there's big old squares. Right. We are doing the fast flying geese or the no waste flying geese method where you cut four to make because four at a time i like that better um so this is where we're going to take our four inch squares uh that are the same as our center so our star and like i said i'm going to match up this white that i would consider a tonal with my gray print and the gray so. mums with what i would consider my um tonal background print I'm going to press this, yep, and then go and square it up. Yep. Because it's what I do. Right. Kind of. Kind of. Um, so this is going to make four flying geese. And Which is good for, for one two. block, I only need two of each color. But like I said, it makes two at a time. Plus, because this is a no waste method, um, this is how we can get a whole lot more out of our fabric. Yes. Which is why we can do this whole quilt with five yards of fabric. What size is a quilt? It's a 60 inch quilt. So perfect throw. It's actually exactly the size of a throw bat. <laughs> so what I size? brought you a six and a half inch square. I'm assuming that's what the square is yep. up to. Because I'm nice. I brought her the exact ruler. That is so nice of you. Well, I also brought my wing clipper. I see that. Have you ever used one? Um, once. Mmm. I'm a big believer in knowing how to trim up flying geese without any special tools. I think people should know what the protocol is because there's not always the right tool in the right size. But if you're doing a whole lot of them, it's sure nice to have a shortcut. It really is. Okay, so for the fast flying geese, I put the two four inch squares did you do a video with the wing on clipper? it. I don't know. I think we used it when we did the fast flying geese video. Um. Anyway, so for fast flying geese, what you're gonna do, and then these need to be three and a half. Yep. Um, put two four inch squares on the opposite sides of this seven and a half inch block. Um. Guys, this one you can't go, we did a whole video on this. Right, you don't go scant. You need to do a true quarter inch yes. seam. Not well, scant, okay. not generous. You can do scant within a thread width, but not more than that. Right. No eighth of an inch. 
width. Right, a thread width is fine because you gotta press, I usually press these to the side, so. But I run into that problem a lot when I teach my Quilting 101 class, because when we do the half square triangles, I'm like, oh, you can sew scant because you're gonna trim. Um, you're gonna trim. And then they do these and they sew them scant and then there's uh, no room for a seam allowance at the top. So your goose has a blunted nose like it ran into a wall or something. Yeah, that's not good. Three right. and a half? Three and a half. Okay. Right. You don't want blunted geese noses. No goose noses. Okay. Okay. So I know y'all have made a sawtooth star before, or at least most of, most of you have, because it's a very, very basic block. It's one of the most common blocks we see everywhere. If you want, I brought a design board. So we can... I'll get it. I was just going to finish trimming these two. Lay it out. Oh, you drew a line on the other ones. Yes, I did. I told you that. No, but you did on the three and a half, not the four. Oh, oops. It's okay. I'll let it fly. All right. Fine. Can you cut down the center of that for me so that I can move along? I guess so. Okay. I All right. usually use a magic wand for cutting, just so you know. But it works for that. All right, so I'm going to set one of those aside because, like I said, I only need two yep. for now. So we'll just... All right. She'll go home and make these in. Right. So Finish this it. is the part where people are sure they messed up because they have this, like, part. Um, that means you did it right. That means you did it right. So you're going to take another one of the four-inch squares, place it at the top right here, um, because I don't have my table with a line or anything. I'm going to have to go ahead and draw a line, corner to corner, and then I'm going to go ahead and sew a quarter of an inch on each side of the line. Sorry, my kids had to come today because my two oldest are at Grandma's house for the week, which is super fun. But so we've done our house. It means triangles. I don't have help. Oh, and then these are your. No, no, no. It goes up. Does it go this way? It goes like this. That's what I had it. It was just the other way. You could have just I turned know, the board. But, you know, I'm neurotic. I know. For real. Okay, guys. We know this. We all know this. Anyway, so if you hear a little seven-year-old and three-year-old wandering here. around and making noise, they're mine. This is true. I'm going to use your wing clipper. Go ahead and use my wing clipper to cut. Because it's a safer way to go. Right, the magic wand is not made for cutting. It's yeah. really just um, to draw lines. It's, it's too thin. It's easy to jump the curb and... Lose a finger. Cut your fingers. Jen and I, neither of us have, we both have experience. Right, we have both made nice cuts out of our uh, pointer fingers. Um, yeah, so, that's normal again. Mine's not. <laughs> mine will never, be. never will be. It never will. I still, it's still at an angle. She got hers. See, I got mine pretty good. Mostly good. Yeah, yours is pretty normal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine, the whole tip of my finger right here is scar tissue. So, you know, it's that nice blend of numb and overly sensitive. I know. That's how mine is. Which is awesome. Love scar so tissue. So don't do that. So don't do it. I did mine, guys. While teaching a, while teaching a class. class. But it's because I was standing at a counter cutting and somebody asked me a question. And I kept cutting and I turned to answer and, well, there went my finger. So, okay. um. So we don't do that. Don't do that. Use a real ruler. Use a real ruler and ignore people when they ask you questions while cutting. Or put down the rotary blade. Okay. One or the other. Just, yeah, don't hurt yourself. It's no Be careful because, like, the injuries are real. I was, like, and a minute away from them having to cauterize my finger. Are not uh, immune. No. In fact, it's funny to me because it seems like it's mostly experienced quilters that do it. Well, we've all done it. Well, and part of it, I think the reason it's experienced quilters is because we could become complacent. We're comfortable. Oh, I know what I'm doing. And so you don't look at that uh, tool anymore as, a, as dangerous. Yep. And, that's, and that can be a problem. 
Anyway, that's a fun tangent. Yeah, random. Hey, Sophie, can you go play? Okay, in a minute. Okay. I'm gonna let her press those. All or right. At least one of those. You coming to two. say hi? This is Sophie. This is my Sophie. She's four. All right, Mama's got a soap. Okay, go past me. In a minute again. Sorry, guys. Then go. <laughs> All right, three and a half by six and a half. This is her wing flipper, guys. It's a really handy little tool that comes in two different sizes. It would help if I turned it the right direction. Um. Can line it up and adjust and make it work. You're a little off, but that's okay. Eh. Standing and sewing is not my forte. No, I don't think it's anybody's forte. Um, and especially with stars like this, having a little bit of extra space up here isn't really that big of a deal. No, because we'll lose it in the um in the block. Right. So it's okay. Yep, no big deal. I don't expect perfection out of me or anybody else on the planet. That's good. Other way. Yeah, you had it. Guys, and our stars coming together. It really, it goes like this. Because I'm neurotic, whatever. Seriously. It's a problem. I always tell people, like, you don't have to be as neurotic as me. Like, your life is probably easier and much more peaceful <laughs> if you're not. Totally obsessive and crazy. Anyway, um, so once she gets that one done, I'm just gonna start chain piecing because now what we're up to is a nine patch. And you know, nine patches are easy. We'll sew three rows together and, and sew those two rows together. So I will just start sewing. So yeah, you guys, this is a fun, quick project. Pull out your like, Christmas fabric, your happy fabric, some of those random one yard cuts you've bought over the years that you mm -hmm. kind of love. Right. You know. This is a great quick quilt, you guys. It's fairly quick. Right. I did it in a couple of days. Well, I mean, but it, even for the rest of us. Even for the rest of us. Um, no, I, I was also working on other things and um, feeling kind of under the weather. Like those two days, I went to bed at like 5 p.m. Oh my gosh. Like, so not at my best. It's a block, but there is a, there's a lot of possibility with it and that's what's going Right, I'm excited to post the color study I've been playing with because I've come up with a lot of different designs. And it's a great way to showcase some of your favorite bigger prints. Right. Because the pieces aren't tiny. No, I mean, the center block here is a six and a half inch star. So, so now I'm going to move this back over here and let Liz pin for me. You know, keep her working. It's good for whatever. Okay, but I know I just floated those three inch ones, and that's fine. But especially like this six and a half inch one, that sucker's getting pinned. Yep. In a minute, get. I had to wake them up to come, which is weird. He's normally up at like 6 a.m. Like I know. Well, and I got busy writing this pattern this morning, and then I looked at my watch, and it was like 7.40, and I was like, shoot, <laughs> i got to get out of here. Gideon, in a minute. He's, he's telling you what, what he thinks we should do next. I need to sew. I need to sew this one, one first. To Meet the compulsive thread. chain piecers. Because that's kind of how we are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I own it. Right. I know I have problems. It's okay. all better if we admit it, right? I guess so. Then we're okay. Something like that. I don't know. Fair. Okay. Anyway. So this block finishes, what should we say? It's going to be, inches? it's going to be a 12 inch block. 12 inches. So oh, 12 yeah. and a half unfinished, 12 finished. Um, 
easy to size it up or take it down. Um, yeah. We decided on bigger blocks because we just thought we have okay. It would be fun. We have two kits available for this, guys. That's all we were able to get before we ran out of these adorable two. glow in the dark spiders. I mean, we clearly can do this up in some other fantastic options. Oh, there's tons of great options, guys. But there are two tons. kits available that are going to be exactly like Jen's. They are live on the website right now. There may not be a picture associated with it. Because no, there's no picture. Because we haven't have made it. Um, it's called Evening, Evening Star, Star Quilt Kit. And um, if you want it, fast fingers, you know. Yeah, because there's two available. And that, that's, that's and all it's $65.99. Yep. Because the total kit is five and a half yards of fabric. That's Which it. is awesome. Um, and the pattern's going to be free. So and the pattern's going to be free. Part two. Um, so long as you download soon. Not right now because it's not there yet. <laughs> yeah, once writing. you get your newsletter. Um, yeah, once you get your newsletter, click on the link and download. Because um, the pattern's not in the newsletter. The link to the pattern's in the newsletter. Yeah. Um, so just saving the email does doesn't not do it. It stops being free after like a week or two. So don't hold on to that forever either. Sorry, I'm trying to be that's, precise. That's forever. us uh, encouraging you to um, read our newsletter. Read our newsletter. So, yeah. So, yeah. That's what we're doing. We're almost done, guys. Anybody else count down scenes? I know you do. I know people do besides you. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, guys, this is a fun one. And like I said, just go and search Halloween fabric and find your four favorite prints. I mean, it what you could need be really is classy a light, Halloween a dark, place. and kind of two contrasting so, mediums. Right. So the way I worded it in the pattern is a dark. A medium dark, a light, and a medium light. So that's how you're gonna see it worded in the pattern. Um, and this block that we're making here is gonna be a really good representation of that. Yeah, so we'll talk about it real quick once we get it 100% done. Oh, I should take this off. Yes, you should. It's hard to sew it on. Okay, well, I'll show it to you real fast. Well, no, that's missing another fabric. It is missing a fabric. It will just. Well, we'll do one more seam, and then we'll explain. Let me see the, the color concept. No, let me sum up. She's quoting the Princess Bride. <laughs> the door. Yes, she is. Let me explain. You're not going to let me do the last seam? I am going to let you do the last seam. Okay. I thought you were going to start talking. We may as well finish it. Right? We're one seam away. Beth, your pins are so short. I know. I, I bought them because super... Charlotte opened the package and then dropped them in a couple oh, got lost. Nice. So I bought them. Um, yeah. I use super long pins at home. They're nice and fine. They're really which good. Which I pins. like. Yeah. I like fine pins, but these are a little short for my taste. They're good pins. I'm just so I like used longer to, pins. I just use long ones. Mm -hmm. So it's... So guys, if you notice when I'm pinning it together, where do I, where do I start? Match what matters. I got these two nested, then ease the rest of it. Right. Because that's how we do this. That's how this works. Sarita's about to walk in in a minute, too. I just saw her pull up. <laughs> so when you hear another ding, hear another that's ding. Sarita. We're going to have a real studio soon. And I'm about to right. Camera like, after. guys, mics came. I was playing with them last night. Except that I have to download the software onto a computer, not my phone. So yeah. I need to download it onto my computer. and But then we won't have all this other, like, Background ambient noise. Noise. It's going to be awesome. Plus, we're going to have a room that we can shut the door. Yeah, so the mailman won't come, and nobody will come. come in. It's going to be crazy. We just have to find time for Liz and I to get together and go finish setting it up. Which that's the real challenge. That's the hard part. Especially being uh, moms with kids at home, and summertime, and no school. And all right. That. Keep thinking, well, when school starts. I know. <laughs> it's funny now. Then I'm, like, praying that school actually starts someday. Right. Whatever it takes. I need school. My kids need school. They love school. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So Let's talk. Okay. Light there. Let's medium. talk color. I, I dropped it. I was going to wait for your sound bites since you warned everybody. We warned them. They know it's you. She's okay. Watching us. So what we have is we have our light 
Then this would be the medium light. Because and a with medium all the light. white well, okay. and the flowers. At least this is technically the no. light that it would have been up here. So, um, for your background. She's upside down again. So, for your Whatever. background, this is my dark, this is my medium dark. Okay? For my uh, star, this is my light, this is my medium light. Now, you can totally reverse this. You could have a dark star and a lighter background. Mm -hmm. It's totally up to you. Um, you need about four different tones. Four different tones. And so, so what we did in this, because these both have, you know, the oranges are a very similar color in this one. Mm -hmm. But this has so much white in it from the spider webs right. that it became our lighter right. orange. Right. And I hope that makes and sense. And a really good way to figure out what the tone is of your fabric is take a picture on your phone in black and white and then turn it onto black and white because you can see really quickly what you might think is a medium might Turns be a light dark. or it might be dark yeah so that's a really good way to assess the tone of your fabric you'll see in the pattern because I'm gonna have that totally grayscaled so you can because I want you to pick whatever you want to do I don't want you to think this has to be Halloween yeah so um the pattern that's printed will be totally grayscaled so that you can get an idea of what goes where. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's, and because it's in grayscale, what you want to do is when you take a picture in black and white with your phone, you want it to read about those four different Those four different tones. shades. Because I don't want this to be the same color as this one. Mm -hmm. Like, they're similar, but this to me is clearly darker than this one. Yes, because this has the big, huge white bumps in it. Right. I mean, and this lighter. gray shade is slightly lighter than this one. This gray shade is the same as the that one right there. there. But still, overall, this reads lighter than this one. Mm -hmm. So light, medium light, medium dark, dark. Dark. Yep. Um, anyway, um, this is our going to be our free pattern. It's called Evening Star. It'll come out in your newsletter Probably, Probably tomorrow, today, tonight, which, tomorrow. So if you're not signed up, sign up. If you have been having trouble getting them, email me. Jen an email. Jennifer, Jennifer at Um, And I'll get this bound and done. And uh, like I said, there are two kits available exactly like mine. Um, How much backing do they need? Three and a half yards. Okay. So if you want the haunted houses, three and a half yards. Go fast. Yeah. Um. And we can totally put together custom kits. If you want one like this, but since we're out of the orange, but you want the orange dancing skeletons, we can do that too. You want bats yeah. instead of spider webs, we can do that too. We can get it sorted. Just let us know. And that's it. And that's it. Thanks awesome. for joining us this morning. We'll see y'all next time. Next time. All right.